to go? Yeah, thanks. Um, so we have this list, and there's a couple ways you can do this. We started with the, you can say min x at zero. And that tends to be how you read this at, at zero, or sub zero, or something like that. Um, uh, so yeah. That's how we can find the minimum value in the array, which is not if we were to change all this, you know, put the order different, we should get the same result. Okay, makes sense what this algorithm is doing. We're just walking through it and we have to keep track of one, and then each time we're comparing it, it's not what we said. Pretty straightforward. Now there's another solution to this problem, which is using sorting. So you could sort this list, and nine would end up over here, and then you see the first one. So that's a pretty clever way to solve the problem. <laughs> uh, and the way you can do that, there's a sort package. Um, and there's a sort.ins. You give it x's. And you say for the line x is zero. OK? And that's the right answer. Pretty clever. <laughs> um, this is less. Sorry. The other way for me the, the loop way is more efficient than this way, okay? Um, I, I don't really want to get into the complexity and efficiency stuff, but a lot of computer science is devoted to that kind of analysis. Um, and so if you're curious, this is um, an n log n problem, and the other one is n. So this one takes slightly more operations than the other one. And over, the bigger it gets, the more it's going to result. So this may take 100, and that one may take 1,000. Um, though, in reality, for a list of small, <laughs> it's not. It's not a lot of numbers. If it was a billion, maybe it would matter. But, um, is, there, sure. is there a comparison between range and four in that example? Uh, so you should think of this as doing. Um, no, I meant if you were doing the loop uh, on a range versus a four loop. They're basically the same. So, uh, so in the loop case, I can get there. This happens. And in the sort case, uh, this probably happens 30. Okay. So that's the difference. It's, this, so if this function has decided a loop, and that loop happens, uh, say, four times or something. Okay. So it happens. There's doing a little more work. Uh, but this is this is a really clean way to solve the problem too. We'll just sort all the numbers and then take the first one. Or vice versa, sorting in reverse and take. Uh, so Go has a pretty good sorting algorithm. I, I, you'd have to look up the exact implementation. It's probably quick sort. Uh, that's usually what they are. But you can see in there. It also has another sort for doing stable, so that if things are already in order, they don't get rearranged. Um, but yeah. So pretty easy problem. The other problem of looking up states is also easy. Uh, you know, I'm not going to put all the states in there, but you would make a map of the string. You may if you want. And then you put the code and you put the state name. And then you just print. But you'd have to read from the user. So, but in this case, we could just put it here. Can we get California? And so we could do. that basic structure, we're using a map for lookups. Okay. Uh, so those programs are pretty easy. Um, and the next big thing we're going to tackle here, and this is probably the last thing we'll tackle today, is our, well, our functions. Okay. So we've been using functions, but we haven't like made our own functions. And I haven't really described to you how you use other functions, even though we've been doing it. Like print line is a function. 
Um, and so I want to explain in more detail functions uh, in general.